Welcome back to the Jones Zone, and today I'm going to be showing you guys an old video of one of my favorite boxers, George Foreman, who made an appearance on a Christian Canadian TV show a while back in, I think, 1977. I'm not sure what the TV uh, show was called, but I definitely think we need more like it here in the United States, for sure. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with the video and the commentary. Will you welcome everybody, George Foreman. What, 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 is, what is that verse you said before? I tell you, it's, a lot of people have been kissed by your fists. <laughs> but I, not, you, Romans you 16 just, and 16 said, greet the brother with a kiss of charity. Hey! <laughs> yep, that's Romans chapter 16, verse 16, where it says, Greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. Okay, now honestly, this isn't something many Protestant Christians practice. Uh, but you'll see Italian Americans uh, kissing each other because many of them still retain that Catholic tradition or what have you. But most Christians are greeting each other with hugs. Hey, that's very <laughs> What do you? Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll t <laughs> you know, that I was forgot important. what I was going to say now. <laughs> that was important because you know when Jesus went to the, uh, uh, I think it was Peter's house. I'm not sure, and uh, he said, "I come into your house and you gave me no kiss. This woman haven't ceased to kiss my feet." So a kiss is very important with God. You see? Yeah, he's talking about uh, Luke chapter seven, verses thirty-six through fifty. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed him with the fragrant oil. Yeah, a very well-known scene from the Bible. Isn't that beautiful? It's very yeah. important. You know, it's an expression of love. We, we here, right. you know, in Canada, we sort of are like small C conservatives. We think of ourselves <laughs> that way. And we, you know, the, the, the uh, Victorian culture is very strong, where people don't really show, at in least the Anglo-Saxon segment of this population, <laughs> where we don't really show our affection the way okay. we should. And we but should I, do more of that. <laughs> but I love... Yeah, now when it comes to the Anglo-Saxons, you got to remember, they're rising out of a very depressing version of Christianity, namely the Puritanism, going back to early colonial times. So people weren't very lovey-dovey showing all this affection like today. Back then, going to church was like being at a funeral or something. Everything was serious with a pastor going, and then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, you know, and all of that. I mean, those were hard times, all right? But as for black folks and African Americans, many of us are still feeling the effects of oppression and discrimination, and no one wants to just sit there and mope in that kind of life. So we tend to battle that with cheerfulness and excitement, and we get into the soul, especially black people in the South. So that's why we, uh, let's just say a lot of us are loud like that. Okay. You guys, because you're really standing with the Lord Jesus. I love that. Well, we had a great time of prayer down there together, and when your beautiful wife, Cynthia, said she had a vision while we were praying, we were just worshiping the Lord, and she said she saw a jar of honey, and the honey was just pouring all down over us. I said, why, we're in the land of milk and honey. That's 100% living anyway. Yeah, we like that. You know, last night, um, you were on uh, Global Sports, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the uh, questions that, that was asked was... Uh, and I was sitting at home watching this, you know, on the late sports. <laughs> and uh, the question was asked, uh, eh, a very good question. You know, Wouldn't you like to get back in the ring with Muhammad Ali again? And your answer was, mm, I'd like to get in church with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> you know, I, I think this is going to be great. We have almost almost an hour yet okay and we just want you to just open up and share everything that the Lord would have you share with us. your boxing career here in this newspaper article you were still 
rated number four, although from what I hear, you, you know, you're not, you're number four without really trying. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, because, you know, you, are you, you're officially retired? Well, I, I never said I was retired. After my experience in Puerto Rico, I think March the 17th, in uh, 1977, I went back into the dress room and I was just cooling off. And I started walking and cooling my body off and I was just overtaken with, that I was going to die. And I experienced a death in that room. And uh, now who were you fighting? Uh, I had fought Jimmy Young, and I had just lost the fight. Just a, a decision. And no one, it wasn't a tough fight or anything. I waited around to get the decision of the fight, and I saw that I had lost, and I went on back into the dressing room. Just a normal cooling off. And let me tell you, business picked up for me. I'd always prayed to God. I believed there was a God somewhere. But I said, you know, no matter what, you know, there's, you know, everybody got their own religion, so long as they treat people right. When I left that dressing room, I was screaming the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, I went back after I was, I was snatched out of my body, and I don't know if you've ever been to the sea. As far off as you can see, is nothing but water. Well, I saw it, but as far off as I could see was nothing but people caught out in like a trap. And I know this place was hell, but I said, I don't care. If this is death, I still believe in God. Then I was snatched right out of that place and taken to another place of life. And back into my body, and I started screaming, that's all right, I'm dying for God. And so, as I was sitting there, I was snatched into all kind of religions and brought back into the dressing room. I didn't know what was going on. So I got ready to get up off the table. You actually felt you were dying. I saw death. I saw it. I mean, I had built my whole life on real estate and what I had in the bank. And I saw it all like a big joke. I don't know if you stick a match to a piece of paper. For a moment, it stands up after it's burned, and then you touch it and it crumble. I saw the whole world crumble behind me, and all I had was nothing. I had to leave all of that in the world, and I couldn't even tell my mother, bye, I was dead. I was dead, and I started crying. I said, Lord, I don't want to die, and I don't want to die. I could still box, and I was just talking to God. I could still box. He said, I don't want your money. I want you. So I, as they laid on the table, I'm, I'm coming back into my body, and I told one, my doctor, there was eight men in the room, to move his hand because there's the thorns are making him bleed, and blood started running down my face. And I told the other ones to move their hand because the blood on, my, on his hands was making, you know, his bleeding on his hand. And on my feet, there was blood. All the places where Jesus had uh, died. And I never believed in Jesus. I wasn't going to go for it. I never would have. But let me tell you, Jesus is alive. I started screaming, Jesus Christ is coming alive. And I walked out of that room. I jumped up off the table and hit, hit in a cold shower. I had to fight eight men to get into a cold shower because that's the last thing you want an athlete to do after a fight. Let's get into a cold shower and there was no hot water. I start screaming words like, hallelujah, I've been born again. <laughs> now, right here, George is talking about being baptized in that cold shower. Some people think you have to actually go down in the water, but it doesn't seem to work that way for everybody. God will take that shower if that's all you have to work with. So George got the vision from God first. Then he received the Holy Ghost and then he started speaking in tongues. And there's some people who don't even get baptized, but the Holy Spirit just runs through them and they start speaking in tongues for the first time. So, yeah, um, moving on. Really? <laughs> and so uh, in the dressing room, so, uh, I come out and then I, from, 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 from my stomach, the lower part of my stomach, I couldn't control no more of what I was saying. The only thing I could manage to say was, I don't know what I'm going to say next. And I started speaking in tongues and everything in Did the Did you know room. what that was? Did I you? didn't know nothing about none of it. I mean, I just sit there and I couldn't control myself. They thought I was crazy and, and hurt, and they took me to the doctor. You know, they, they thought I was losing my mind. And they took me to the hospital and, and ran all sort of tests on me for about two or three days, and nothing was wrong with me. But I saw the glory of God. I saw it. Let me tell you that Jesus is alive. There's a living God, and I didn't even know it. I was wondering about it, but now I'm not wondering. I know. And I thank God because there's a lot of people who think for sure and maybe and maybe not, but I know God, I don't know, for some reason, touched me an old sinner. Just an unclean man out in the world, just doing everything and showed me that there's a living God. Since then, I've been telling everybody, I don't care where you come from, what are you doing, stop it and learn about God. And the Bible is here, it's been here for thousands and thousands of years, thousands of years. And why God did this for me, I don't know, but I just praise him every day. And I dropped everything I was doing to tell the whole world that Jesus Christ <laughs> is alive. God took me all over the country fighting in Africa, Puerto Rico, uh, Europe, everywhere. And I was just trying to exalt George Foreman. Now I'm going all over trying to tell him about Jesus. 
Okay, so that's a green light right there that you have the Holy Ghost. You get that urge to want to tell people about Jesus. You know, and life becomes more than just benefiting you. It's about a greater good and sharing the word with other people now. All right. I, I'm going to hold this microphone mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you if you would just pray with the people and, and, and challenge men and women okay. and teenagers and boys and girls to join you. Let's get on our knees right Close. here. And, and, and let's just do that. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord God of heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you give these souls who are listening to me enough courage, Lord, enough energy just to fall down, God. Go into a closet if you're embarrassed. God don't care where you are and shout the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God to show you something. God is no mystery. He's alive. He'll come right into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I ask that you move on every family who have enough nerve to humble themselves to know that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, and that Jesus Christ is indeed alive and the Son of the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I ask you to move on these souls, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. All right, man, that was a powerful prayer, man. How he, his, his bodily gestures, his energy and everything like that. That was a powerful uh, prayer. You could see it, that he really believes in what he's saying, that he has faith in God, man. You really can't. It wasn't one of them little, oh, I, I feel like I have to pray kind of thing. And, you know, you have to push yourself kind of thing. No, it wasn't that. He was the real deal. You know, this man really saw the, the Lord, was touched by the Lord. He said, Lord, if you just give him enough energy to make him fall down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's some, that's some power right there, man. You know, and it just, it's, it's amazing. And the dude standing beside him was really getting into it. You saw he was really, really getting into it and everything like that. I had me laughing there for a second, you know, uh, standing on his, uh, I think on his left. But yeah, man, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, you guys stay blessed, all right?